blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
I read the scripture as a young preacher that has helped me for a long time. Ik heb deze schrift gelezen als een jonge aan een jonge prediker die mij vaak geholpen heeft. And the scripture is found in the four gospels. En deze schrift is is te lezen in de vier evangelieën. It's found in Matthew 4:18 to 22. In Matthäus 4 vers 18 tot 22. It's found in in Mark chapter 1 verse 16 to 19 and 22. Marcus 1, 16, tot en met 19, it's tot found met 21. in John chapter 1 verse 40. Johannes 1 vers 40. And it's found in Luke chapter 5 verse 2 to 11. And Lucas 5 vers 2 tot en met 11. And I want to read it from Luke chapter 5. And ik wil het lezen uit Lucas hoofdstuk 5. And there it says these words. And daar staan deze woorden. Beginning from verse 1, it came to pass. Begin met deze woorden en het, het gebeurde. That as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Toen de mensen uh, op hem duwden om het woord van God te horen. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Toen stond hij bij de meer van Genezareth. And saw two ships. En hij zag daar twee schepen. Standing by the lake. Bij het meer. But the fishermen were gone out of them. Maar de, de visserlieden waren daar uitgegaan. And we are washing their nets. Wassen hun netten. I want to deal on the subject tonight how to mend your net. Ik wil vanavond spreken over hoe uw netten te repareren. In Matthew 4 verse 18 to 22, the Bible says they were mending their nets. 
In Matthäus 4, vers 18 tot en met 22, dan zegt de Bijbel dat ze hun netten aan het repareren waren. In Mark chapter 1, vers 16 tot 22, de Bijbel zegt dat Jezus met hen mendde hun netten. En in Marcus 1, van 16 tot en met 22, dus, daar zien we dat Jezus hun ontmoette toen ze hun net waren aan het repareren. In John chapter 1, vers 14, de Bijbel zegt dat Jezus met hen mendde hun netten. En in Johannes 1, vers 40, daar zien we dat Jezus hen ontmoette. And in Luke chapter 5, and in Lucas 5, verse 2 to 11, we are told that he met them washing the net they mended. Daar zien wij dat Jezus hen ontmoette en ze waren bezig om de netten te wassen die ze net gerepareerd hadden. I teach a class at home is called wisdom class. En thuis onderwijs ik een wijsheidsklas zoals dat heet. I found that we Christians have so attached ourselves to religion as if it's an act of respect to God. Ik heb ontdekt dat wij als christenen ons zo ge gegeven hebben aan re religie dat het een, een daad is uh, van God aan God. You come to church on Sunday because you don't want to offend God. Je komt naar de kerk op zondag omdat je God niet teleur wil stellen. Or you come to church on Sunday to keep respect because Sunday is the Lord's day. Je komt op zondag om respect te houden, want zondag is het toch een verloren dag. Or because your father was a Christian and you are now a Christian. En je vader was een christen en nu ben je zelf ook een christen. Or you like the way Christians behave. Of je houdt van de manier waarop christenen met elkaar. So you have badge Jesus is Lord. Dus je hebt zo'n badge op van Jezus is Heer. Or you believe that Christians are neat people. You want to be like them. Of je gelooft dat christenen nette mensen zijn en je wil zoals hen zijn. I found that in Christianity we have found ourselves to become lazy elements. In Christendom heb ik ontdekt dat wij uh, luie elementen hebben gevonden onder de mensen. We have no drive like the worldly people. Zoals de wereldse mensen een, 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 een drijfveer hebben, dat vind je zelden in het huis We don't want to have things to help other people. We don't want to, we don't want to have property, we don't want to have hotels, we don't want to have schools, we don't want to have hospitals, because we are Christian, we must be poor. Omdat we christen zijn, moeten we maar arm blijven en simpel blijven. We willen geen hotels hebben en, en, en hele grote zaken en toestanden doen eigenlijk. When we see anybody trying to have things, we say no, that's not Christianity. Als wij ontdekken dat iemand bezig is om allerlei instituties of dingen te bouwen, dan zeggen we nee, dat kan nooit christen zijn. We have been culturally trained that because we are going to heaven, we must be nothing in this world. We zijn zodanig getraind dat wij denken wij gaan naar de hemel, dus daarom moeten we hier op aarde niets hebben. If you see unbelievers who doesn't go to church, he has 10 cars, Rolls Royce, Mercedes, Volvo, Cadillac. You say, good, good, very good, unbeliever. <laughs> Als we een ongelovige gezien, dan zien we van hij is hartstikke rijk. Hij heeft 10 auto's, Rolls Royce, Mercedes Benz, Volvo. Hij heeft alles en nog wat. We zeggen, ja, dat is een ongelovige. What car do they make? What car do they make in Holland? What car? Volvo. Volvo, Volvo is from here. Yes, sir. Mercedes Benz. Made here? Made, made in Germany? Made in Germany. What one do you make here? Volvo. Which one does Christian make? Christians make? Yeah. What car? There's no Christian car. No. No. The Dove. <laughs> what, what big hotel does Christian run in Holland? Welke grote hotel heeft een Christian hier in Nederland? Which big hospital owned by Christian? Welke grote uh, ziekenhuis is van een christen in Nederland. How many universities does Christians have? Hoeveel universiteit hebben christenen in Nederland? We have narrow mind. We hebben een heel smal denken. Small, klein. big, big mouth, small mind. <laughs> Grote mond, klein in gedachten. When we see a Christian who is born again a pastor with two cars, three cars, we say, what? Is this still a Christian? <laughs> We zien een voorganger, als hij twee of drie auto's heeft, dan kijken we vol verbazing en zeggen, nee, is hij nog een christen? We think smallness is synonymous of Christians. Wij denken dat kleinheid uh, gelijk is aan goed christen zijn. Once we are small, then we are going to heaven. Als we, als we heel klein zijn, dan gaan we naar de hemel. Because we don't believe that Christians should have anything. Want we, we geloven niet dat een christen iets mag bezitten. That's why we sing in the church. This little cup of mine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Waarom, waarom zingen we in de kerk, dit kleine lampje van mij, dat, dat laat ik schijnen. Then the choir sing, this little, uh, fill my cup, Lord, 
I lift it up, Lord. En het kop, van, kop, kop. Van, van, hey, hier is mijn kopje, Heer, vul het op. Klein kopje. Little light. Klein lampje. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. We don't think of big vastness of God. We denken niet aan een groot vat. We think if anything is big, if anything is big, Als it's not godly. Is, dan kan het nooit goddelijk zijn. We think we should not, we should not love anything in this world. Wij denken dat wij niet. Look for another microphone. Wij denken niet dat wij iets in de wereld lief mogen hebben. When when we think we think in the scope of something small. Als wij denken in 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 de maat van iets kleins. You don't see Christian talking of millions and billions, only unbelievers. Je ziet niet dat christenen spreken over miljoenen en biljoenen, maar alleen uh, ongelovigen. You do see Christian talk of big business. Je, spre- je hoort christenen niet spreken over grote zaken. Unless peanut business. Behalve kleine pinda's. Small. Heel klein. Uh-huh. Is a Christian. If you talk small, it's a Christian. Uh, als hij klein spreekt, moet het een christen zijn. If he talk big, he's unbeliever. Als hij groot spreekt, dan zal hij ongelovig zijn. Whereas we ought to know. Maar we zouden eigenlijk. We should weten. know that the Bible says. Dat de Bijbel zegt. The earth is the Lord's. De aarde is des Heeren. And the fullness thereof. En de volheid daarvan. Everything in this world. Alles in deze wereld. The Bible says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord. De Bijbel zegt, alles is van mij. The Bible says, we are the head and not the tail. De Bijbel zegt, we zijn het hoofd en niet de staart. The Bible says, we are joint head with Christ and co head with God. De Bijbel zegt, dat wij erfgenaam zijn met Christus en mede erfgenaam met God. We hate Everything in this world we because we are going to heaven. Omdat we naar de hemel gaan. Say what I said. We hate everything in this world because we want to go to heaven. We hate alles op deze wereld omdat we naar de hemel willen gaan. Whereas the Bible says God so loved the world. Maar de, we merken dat de Bijbel zegt dat God de wereld zo lief heeft gehad. And we hate the world. En wij haten die wereld. How can we hate what God loves? Hoe kunnen wij haten waar God van houdt? How can Bible say we are head and not the tail and yet we are less than tail? Hoe kan de Bijbel van ons zeggen dat wij zijn het hoofd en niet de staart en toch zijn we minder dan de staart? How can we win the world when we have nothing to win it? Hoe kunnen wij de wereld winnen als wij niets hebben om het te winnen? I'm not sure this church have up to 10 cameras. Ik weet niet. Ik weet niet zeker of deze TV camera. I don't think we have up to 10. Meer dan tien camera's heeft. Maybe church only has three cameras. One, two, three. Misschien heeft de kerk alleen maar drie camera's. Four. Church has four. De kerk heeft vier camera's. This church has four. Deze gemeente heeft vier. Good. But BBC doesn't have four cameras. BBC, de BBC heeft geen vier camera's. They have many, many cameras. Ze hebben veel fouten van camera's. ITN doesn't have four cameras. ITN ook niet vier camera's. Superstation doesn't have four cameras. Super. Super, super channel. Super channel. <laughs> You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
every sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time. that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I say, make an instrument with your hands. Jesus died on the cross. Serving me on the cross. Healing me on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this is a true life story. When this ministry started, because we couldn't get denominational hymn books to sing from, we have to form our own choruses and compose our choruses. One of them is this one. Jesus died on the cross, saving me on the cross, healing me on the cross, glory him. Oh, Jesus died on the cross, saving me on the cross, healing me on the cross, glory I say, Jesus died on the cross, healing me on the cross, saving me on the cross. Jesus died on the cross, saving me 
Amen. Amen. Sit down. Praise the Lord. We are reading three scriptures this morning. He's alive again. Grave could not hold him. Turn with me to John's gospel. When we finish that one, we are reading Luke and then end with Mark. John's gospel. Chapter 20. The first day of the week, comment Mary Magdalene. Early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Luke's Gospel. Twenty-four. Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and a certain others with them. Verse 5. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how <laughs> he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to the rest. Mark chapter 16. He is not here. My Jesus is not there. Your Jesus is not there. Verse 1, Mark 16. When the Sabbath was passed... Oh Lord, <laughs> every time I read this first line, there's a day of the passing of everything that saddened your life. Whether it is spiritual hindrance, setback, hunger, nakedness, deprivation, lack of progress, in your job, your body, your health, your finances, your marriage, the sepulchre is open today. And your Sabbath day will pass. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices That they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. At the rising of the sun. No matter how dark your yesterday, today's your rising sun. Somebody must hear me today. You say, my years since I was born have been darkness. I'm glad to tell you the rising of the sun is coming to your life. How dark has your yester years been? How agonizing and painful. How cheerful. How painful. How much ache, how much bleeding, how much tribulation, how much trial has yesteryears given you? Beginning from today, 
There's a rising sun coming your way. You say that was like it had been darker than I expected. That's good for yesterday. It is not bad to start life in darkness. But it is good. It is good. It is good. It is good to end it with light. Somebody shout hallelujah. You say from when I was small, I suffered. Not bad. When I was young, I was deprived of blessings. Not bad. The darker the night, the brighter the day. The tougher your morning, the easier your evenings. At the rising of the sun, somebody lift hand up and say, my sun will soon rise. I didn't hear what you say. Say with me, no matter how dark my night, my rising sun is coming. And the Lord himself will rise for me. Shout hallelujah. That first night of his burial. Dr. Aquarero, that first night, the good Friday night, you see, the calendar of God and the calendar of man is very different. The day that Jesus was crucified is called Good Friday. Why? The devil could get no glory. Man would have said the saddest day in man history. But no. Men who know God call it Good Friday. Because in the sight of God, bad thing doesn't happen to good people. Your trial, your test, is not sent to you to destroy you. Sometimes you hear Jesus say, this sickness is not done to death. But, that the Son of God might be made manifest. Sometimes, your business will so die and die and die and die and die. And people will say, he's finished. But look at the rising sun coming this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I see a new sun rising on your behalf. I see darkness leaving you from today. That the son of God might be glorified. At the rising of the sun. Who would have known the sun would rise again? They came to the sepulchre. Verse 3. Mark 16 verse 3. And they said among themselves. Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? John said. The stone have been rolled away. Luke said, the stone was rolled away. Mark said, who shall? Will you stand to your feet for two minutes? I'd like to talk to you for five minutes on angels intervention on resurrection. Demons may put stone at your grave. Sickness may put stone in your business door. The question the women ask is, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Who? Many times when there's stone in your life or business or marriage or home, father is not enough, mother is not enough, brother is not enough, sister is not enough. But I have good news for you this morning. If you can ask the question, God can give you the answer. If it's too big for you, the women we are not saying, who can take us to the sepulchre? They are only saying, when we get there, Akaya, 254 soldiers 
were guarding the stone. 254. 254. A segment like this stood by. With guns in their hands. With authority from the king. With order from Caesar's palace. If the grave shake, shoot aside. And you know our men are more used to evil doing than doing good. They will authorize. When you just see the grave start to shake, stand by. And the commander of the infantry brigade was told, give order, give instruction. The women were not bothered about the soldiers standing by. They were bothered about who to roll away the stone. When you are determined to serve God and determined to follow God, no matter the tons and tissues you experience, no matter the soldiers of the enemy in the enemy's camp, no matter how many bullets and guns they have in their hands, in their mouth, in their arms, when you are determined to serve God, it is how to seek God that is your concern. Can somebody say big amen? amen? They knew the soldiers were there. For they said in the book of Matthew, he has said he will rise. Matthew said they have already campaigned that he will rise. But let us seal the grave so they will not come and steal him and say he rose. If he, the dead Christ, can be a threat, you, the living Christ incarnate, should be a threat to your enemy. <laughs> I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. If the one who died can frighten the living ones. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. They were still, the council had executive council meeting. He said he will rise the third day, so let us do all we can. So that he will not get up today. Man's superability is not as big as God's weakness. And God has no weakness in him. They all surrounded it. And when it was Friday night, they panicked. Saturday night, they panicked. On Sunday morning, On Sunday morning, who shall roll away the stone from the mouth of the sepulchre? Verse 4. When they looked, look at your Bible. When they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Somebody shout hallelujah. God's angelic intervention is the result of resurrection. When the stone in your life and marriage and business is too great, ask question first. God, do you have a stone roller? How and why? How and why? How did they become afraid? Why did they become afraid? Because they saw the size of the stone. When did they become afraid? How? Why? When? They became afraid when they saw that the stone was rolled to cover the grave. But the good news. When you are sleeping, God is on duty for you. I said, while you are sleeping, God is on duty for you. When this stone is bigger than you from today, remember you are not wrong to make inquiry. You are not wrong to ask questions. As I said to them in Ghana, needs are legitimate. 
Solution is positive. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? To have a need is no sin. But to believe in answer and solution should be positive. For if you have no need, what will God supply? For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It is not wrong to have a need. It's only wrong not to believe there's a God who can meet the need. Sit down. How long was the stone by the mouth of the sepulchre? As long as they didn't look. Kindly listen to me. Most of your obstacles could have become miracles if you were looking. Unfortunately, you have been trained by your natural gene to believe that man is born to sweat. And you have been naturally trained by your female life to believe that slavery is part of existence. But resurrection cancelled those two objectives. Where Christ is alive, slavery is abolished. When Christ is alive, redundancy is cancelled and efficiency is enthroned. Somebody say big amen. amen. Who shall roll us away the stone? When they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away already. Why? It was too great for four women to do. That's my prayer for Quippy. Every stone too big for you to roll, God will roll it before you get there. Verse 5. Entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting and the right, at the right hand clothed in <laughs> listen to me somebody did not only roll away the stone he rolled the stone and sat why did he sit on it so the stone will not roll back your stone will not roll back. Your stone will not roll back. If God roll it away, it will not roll back to the same position. Sitting on top of the stone. Clothed in long white garment. And they were frightened. He said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they had laid him. But go your very way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. Somebody say amen. amen. Luke, Luke's gospel. Go. Easter did not only give us good news. Easter gave us the marching order to be at peace. To believe our God and our God. Oh, Lord God. His God and Luke chapter 24. Is that in your Bible? Look at what it says here. Verse 16. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. 
And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Verse 19. He said unto them, What things? They said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Is that in your Bible? Which was a prophet mighty indeed and war before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he who should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. When they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools, late comers to church, who do not pay tithe at the end of the month. Who only come to church on Sunday morning. You fools. You fools. Who should have been telling the women what God did. Slow in heart. Resurrection came to take our foolishness. Resurrection came to give us devotion. Resurrection came to give us dedication. You think I'm hot when I'm preaching? Look at Jesus telling people. Fools. Slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, Abide with us. For it is to us evening. And the days passed then. And he went in to tarry with them. I tell you, resurrection, take Jesus from your street to your house. The conversation of Christ, the discussion of Christ with you on the road, on Easter, become a home matter. They followed, they followed, they followed. After he called them fools and slow of heart, which would have made half of the choir to go, and all the ordained ministers, only one or two will be left. Can you imagine if I come to church on Sunday, that's all you understand, you fools. Slow of heart. The short one will first of all look at the ground. I said, we know this man. It's hot. But they were happy. They said, Lord, if it takes foolishness to serve you, we will follow you. If it takes the slowness of heart to serve you, we are willing to change. But Lord, don't leave us this evening. May Christ not leave you in the evening of your life. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Some of you find him in the morning, but in the evening you don't see him anymore. Don't go away from us this evening. Follow us home. And my Bible said he followed them home. Take Jesus home on resurrection day. When you are down, he will pick you up. When you are sick, he will heal you. When you are poor, he will bless you. When you are rejected, he will accept you. Take him home. The stone is no more at the mouth of the grave. Take a risen Christ home. John's Gospel, chapter 20. Easter to Christ. From the street to their homes. Easter, roll away the stone. 
of hindrance. Easter changed everything. Easter brought new daylight. Jesus said, John chapter 20, verse 15, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have born him. Oh, look at the revelation here, Dr. Basel. The woman thought he was a gardener, but she was so humble to call gardener, sir. Akioya, this will be good for your counseling class. You who defend elders and detain your seniors, how respectful are you? Gardener, sir. When God touched you, he changed you. Sir. This is where I'm going to come to conclusion. If you bore him, tell me where you laid him. And I will take him away. Women, instead of running for who will deliver you from demon of snake vomiting, as nature life, instead of every week you are looking for a ministry of deliverance, take Jesus home today. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to this. Jesus said unto her, Mary, identified, personified. God knows you. Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Stand to your feet. Open your mouth and give him thanks. Open your mouth and give him thanks. His father is now your father. His God is now your God. Lift your hand and give him thanks. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Open your mouth and thank him. Him. You have a God in heaven. He died for you. He rose for you. And by resurrection, his God is now our God. His Father is now our Father. Open your mouth and glorify him. Open your mouth and glorify him. Open 
your mouth and worship him. Glorify our God. Shout hallelujah. Look at me. Say with me. His God is now my God. His Father is now my Father. That should be your boast for the rest of your life. When his God becomes your God and his Father becomes your Father. Whatever his Father did for him, he can do for you. Let us serve God in fear. Let us serve God with devotion. Let us serve God with commitment. That's what Mama and I spent the whole night praying. God, the next years of our life, we want to devote it to serve you and serve your people. Our devotion to you is without limit. Our commitment to you is without limit. We believe God. We can work together as a family. Raise a ministry that will taught the whole planet earth with good news. Now that he's God, it's your God. His father is my father. His miracle will be your miracle too. Let's sing this song. Christ the Lord is risen today. Pastor Henry, give us the harmon of the organ. Hymn number one, two, three, page one oh four. Everybody say hallelujah. Grave, where is your big dead? Where is your sting? It is swallowed in victory. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Be seated. You have a new father in heaven. You may be born in Hawaii, born in Kano, born in Calabar, born in Obese. Your new heavenly father never dies. And what he did for his son at the cross, he will do it for you in living. May God make this sister become the time of divine intervention for your life and family. And may the hand of God that raised him from the dead lift you from your oblivion and grave of death and give you new beginning to die no more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me hear you say amen. Jesus died on the cross, saving me on the cross, healing me on the cross, glorying him. Oh, Jesus died on the cross, saving me on the cross, healing me on the cross, I say, Jesus died on the cross, healing me on the cross, saving me on the cross.
can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time.
become a Christian, you set extra goals. What God intended you to be does not stop because you are not a Christian. You have higher aspiration with greater inspiration from God. And I believe you keep that in mind that God did not enter your life to stop you from progressing. Jesus only come to lift you up and not to put you down. You believe that? Amen. I asked God to let me have a feeling of the lives of the people. The stage we ought to be. The place and position of God to us in life. And this morning, I can say I heard Christ distinctly say to me, having stepped out to follow him, growth and growing into the fullness of Christ is a necessity. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's time for everything under the sun. This is not a time of asking ourselves, am I a Christian? Do I want to become a child of God? You know why you are here. I know why I'm here. But more than that is the fact that God is tired of baby Christians. Those who hear that the devil is coming and they flee. It's time for the devil to hear that Christians are coming and he start to run. <coughs> Two years ago, I'm sure I told this story before, just in case you were not here when I told it a year ago. The general council of all the witches and wizards in the world were going to have their 12th anniversary celebration. And I didn't know you have so many wizards in Australia until they registered to attend that conference. A total of 1,084 registered from England to attend that conference in Nigeria. And over 1,000 delegates from the United States and about 500 from North Southwest. The whole country of Nigeria, they were shaking that witches and wizards were coming to hold conference. And guess where they choose as the city to hold the conference? was my city. And the newspapers began to carry the advert. World Council of Witches and Wizards to hold conference in Benin City, where I come from. I heard it on radio, I heard it on TV. I saw the posters, and the chief host was a young man. I'm two years older than. He was boasting of all they were going to do. One morning, I was so angry. I called for press conference. And I said, I am stopping that witchcraft conference. And it will not hold. That was a decision that I was very sure the Lord told me to take. So, the man who was going to host the conference said, He also have no right to stop the conference. Not even God can stop the conference. 
We've already signed all who are coming, 9,000 delegates from all over the world, witches and wizards we are going to meet in my city. And I told the press conference, if they come by mistake, they will never return back home. I kill all of them. And they thought I was joking. I don't joke with the power of the Holy Ghost. I act with it. And so, the press men heard what I said. And they said, Dr. Idahosa, this man said they will come. And you said they are not coming. Are you ready for national debate on TV? And I said, yes, I'm ready. One of the staff of the television company said, supposing you are meeting and in confrontation you drop dead. I said, I'm the only one that has power to bind and to lose. Me. And so they arranged live telecast for one hour. Me, on behalf of the Christians, and the chief host of Wizards and Witches for Demon World. And they queued up to start the debate. And they asked him to open up. And he told us all the benefits of the power of witches and wizards. And explain and explain and explain all the value of the power of darkness. And they said, Dr. Idahosa replied to that. And I said, I only have three things to say. Number one, the conference will not hold. I repeat, the conference will not hold. And I say, the conference will not hold. He shouted, what are you talking? We are going to meet. I said, no. So the, the moderator said, he has told us what we are going to gain. You tell us the opposite. I said, no. The conference will not hold. That's all. Nobody will gain anything from the conference because it will not hold. He rose up again. What are you talking? When you hold church convention, we don't stop it. Now we are going to hold our own. I said, it will not hold. He was mad. And I said, number two, if those witches by mistake come, they will not return. I kill all of them. He looked at me and said, you kill us? I said, right now. That's my number two answer. Totally, I want you to look at that camera right now. Say to the 100 million people in Nigeria, admit that you are a wizard. And I make you melt on your seat. If you don't understand the meaning of melting, do you know what it means to melt? M-E-L-T, melt. To vanish. I say, look straight to that camera. Say, I'm a wizard and I make you melt here. He said, what are you talking? I said, look at that camera, not me. Look at that camera. Just say, 100 million Nigerians, I'm a wizard. Then I said, when you admit that you are a wizard, and I say something, and you perish. He looked at the camera. I said, I'm not a wizard. You see, the reason why many of you are harassed by the devil 
is because you don't know whom you are. The reason that people in your society don't fear God is because you, the saints, have not shown the world whom your God is. But when you begin to show the world that you are in Christ and that Christ is in you, demons will see you and flee. Jesus never begged the devil to allow him to walk in the streets of Jerusalem. No. Whenever Jesus was coming, demons cried out. Evil spirits cried out. And when I told this man, face the camera and say you are a wizard and I make you vanish. He looked at me again. He said, by what power? I said, by the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of you can tell demon that you are stronger than him? How many of you can tell poverty that your God is rich? How many of you can tell sickness as Dr. Margaret Idahosa said just now? Devil, behold the temple of God. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Paul said to the Christians in Ephesus, he said, don't play with your Christianity. You should be tired of religion. How many can say amen? amen? If you are not tired of religion, religion will kill you. I tell you that. If you are not tired of the old system, you can never have revelation of the new thing. All of you have spent many years in him one, him two, him three, him four. You spend many years in praying. We have left undone those things we ought to have done. And I've done those things we ought not to have done. And so there's no hell. It's time for us to have hell. The ministry of Christ is the ministry of regeneration. The ministry of Christ is the ministry of transformation. The ministry of Jesus Christ is a life-changing ministry. And when you turn to Christ, you turn from religion to reality. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. So, Paul said in Ephesians 4, turn to your Bible. And I want to speak for these few minutes on the subject, growing to the fullness of Christ. Or relocating yourself. Ephesians 4. Therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, Australian, that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
Listen to them. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Look at me. How many of you have heard that the power of God is moving in America? Let me see, honey, if you've heard that. That's true. How many of you heard that the power of God is moving mightily in Africa? Let me see, honey. Every year, 34% of Africans become Christians. Every year. We believe that before the end of the century, 90% of the total inhabitants in Africa will become Christian. One spirit, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Christianity is the only unifying force that joined East and West. Not United Nations, but United Spirit. Not Organization of African Unity, but Organization of the Holy Spirit. And it's time for everyone in Australia to rise up and say, God, what more do you have in stock? I believe in the church. I told Pastor Collins, 15 years ago I was forced to open a church for two reasons. The denomination that I found Christ 26 years ago refused my converts because they were not looking for sinners in their church. So I said, God, what do I do? Thousands are coming from darkness to light. And I heard him say, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So I opened a little Bible school. Two, two weeks, I told you yesterday. Go to my Bible school, pass out the 15th day. Today, we have 2,300 churches. 2,300. And in my city, we have 54 churches in my city of the same ministry. One. And our ministry has become one of the fastest growing churches in the entire universe. Why? In my city before, 20 years ago, a witch doctor can tell you, you will die by 2 o'clock this afternoon, and you really die. But now, if you say you are going to die 2 o'clock, you live till tomorrow. Why? The power of God has canceled the power of darkness. That is the purpose of this conference. We are not here to sing him, one him, two him, three him, four. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come and nothing for today. I know that. I know that. We are here to make men out of men. We are here to make women out of women. And when this convention finishes this weekend, every Australian man a devil caster. Every Australian woman a devil caster. Shout hallelujah. In my church at home, women can lay hand on devil-possessed people and speak life. Women can prophesy. 
Women can cast out devils. Women can heal the sick. Women can raise the dead. Women can preach the gospel. Why? Jesus Christ is for male and female. I simply say, Paul said all women to keep quiet, minus my wife. She is to open her mouth. She's not the one Paul told to keep quiet. But Paul said, verse 7, now my message. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I love this. Every one of us you, 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 me. Everyone. Say that. Every one of us. One more time. Is given grace according to the measure of Christ. Isn't that powerful? God didn't say some people should be Christian 30 years and still spelling A, B, R, B, D. No. Jesus grew. He worked strong. Favor with God and man. Jesus could look at lepers and say to the leprous body, Be thou clean. He could look at the blind. Yesterday, the Spirit of the Lord told me somebody had wanted to die. And I shouted, and I shouted, and I shouted. The power of God took me across there, came here, said it many times. When I was going home, a young tall man heard me and said, I'm the one. And I'm glad he's delivered. He's delivered. But to you, are you called from darkness to sit down like a baby and a dummy? No. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure and the gift of Christ. God has given you the same measure of the gift he gave to Christ. Every village in Australia ought to hear about Jesus. Every town in Australia should hear about Jesus through you. The healing power of Christ should fill the whole Melbourne. The healing power of Christ should go through Sydney. The revival spot of God should go to Adelaide. In Brisbane, everywhere you come from, when you get back home, go preach. Go cast out devils. Go heal the sick. Go raise the dead. How? The same measure of the gift of Christ has been given to you. When I became a Christian, my city was one of the most dreaded cities in the continent of Africa. In my town, it was called the city of blood. They used human beings for sacrifice. Daylight, they kill you for sacrifice. But when God raised me, Pastor Colin, he told me, I will use you to change the society. I couldn't believe that. All the religious
religious leaders. There was no difference between the Christians and the sinners. The sinners smoked, the Christians smoked. The sinners drank, the, believer, the unbelieving believers drank. Everything that the sinners did in my city, the church people did it. So there was a spirit of conformity. But Paul said, be not conforming, but be ye transforming. And the Lord told me, you will preach me and I will change the city. Today, 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 we are on television 16 hours a week for the kingdom. 16. And the believers now can stand up in my city and say, Hey, today, no rain. And there will be no rain. Believers, the same word. The believers can now say in my city today, Let there be light, and there be light. We are learning every day to be like Jesus. You must be tired of religion. Because if you are not tired of religion, it will ruin you. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. The power of deprivation is held captive. The power of bondage in religion is held captive. The power of the lack of joy is arrested by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is time for every believer in Australia to begin to bind and to lose. Are you hearing me? Mary is no more answering prayer. Jesus is now hearing the prayer of the saints. I know that will offend many of you but I'm so glad that in Acts chapter 1 Mary went to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost some of you are talking to God through Mary but I'm talking to God through Christ and my prayers are answered faster Now that he ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower part of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles. Listen to this. Some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What are you? What? I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You should be one out of some. What are you? Some sitting down. Some complaining. Some murmuring. Some backbiting. Some sleeping. Now, some teachers. Some apostles. Some prophets. Some teachers. Some evangelists, you must become somebody. Don't sit down and do nothing. Jesus died and rose that you may become somebody. Are you listening to me? That is the purpose of church. That's why this man spent thousands for conventions like this. That you may become one of the some that are vessels and channels in the hands of God. He ascended that you may become somebody. And God wants you to become somebody. Every country we go we ask God give us a man or woman you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God preachers prophets teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com hey there this is anointed tube anointed tube is blessing and changing lives around the world we are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation 
by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. There is a prophetic word from the Lord. I and they that God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. That is the word of God. It's time to rise. It's time to rise. Today, nothing will stop me. I am going to have my harvest. I don't care whether I'm in order or not in order. Whether I'm under protocol or no protocol. Whether it is legal or it's not legal. I am going to get my miracle. If you dare to be out of order tonight to reach God, if you dare to be out of protocol tonight to reach God, I tell you your new season, your new season is here. The Lord said I'm healing you. The world break down. The saints should break forth for joy. Light and power and vigor of vitality. And if Christ ever healed, he can heal today. The crusade of the century. Welcome the Archbishop Professor Benson in the Hosa. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. One of the greatest lessons I have learned is that Nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in his name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offerings, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them 
that diligently seek him. Somebody say amen. Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophet is, thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Thank you. Every one of us stand to your feet. This is a mighty sanctuary for which we give God the glory. I want to thank Archbishop Bolden and family and you family from Tampa for coming to support us here tonight. I thank God that this is an inspiration ground. I say this is an inspiration ground. This is a beautiful place that anyone who believes in good should rejoice about. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting us tonight. If Jesus were here physically tonight, he will ask you two questions. Number one, why are you here? Number two, what do you want? He will not say more than that. Many times we are in the church not asking God anything and many times we just take it as a routine I read one day in my Bible it said this is your life serving God is your life knowing Christ is your life and just in case you are here tonight to ask God nothing for yourself Ask him something for me. Did you hear that? Just in case you don't know why you are here tonight, be here for me. Because to be in the house of God, I don't know why you are there, is a waste of time. And then to be in the house of God to ask God nothing is also a waste of time. So you must not miss the two things. Why are you here? To worship the Lord. Why are you here? To ask him. I love what you did for us just now. I'm going to adopt it at home. For the pastor to ask every family to come out tonight. That's something new. And what I say is this. Whatever you find that is good in where you go. Take it home. Amen. Amen. When... When I came to America first time about 30 years ago, the press man asked me, America is a terrible place. What did you see? I said, I said, only good things. If you are looking for bad news, ask New York Times. If you are looking for good news, ask me. We are ambassadors of good news. Can I hear you say hallelujah? <laughs> Amen. Thank you once again, Dr. Strader, for giving us the opportunity to be here with you as a family. Before you sit down, lift up your Bible before you sit down. Those of you brethren from Canada, we are so happy to have you here with us. I thank God for the privilege of preaching in Canada for the last 27 years. Let me see your Bible lifted up. Say with me, this is my sword. To defeat principalities and powers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. For the few years I have been in the ministry, which is almost 40 years, one of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way 
that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. One day, as a young preacher, I came across the scripture I'm going to read tonight. Don't preach it too much, but just read it. There is power in the word of God. How many of you believe that? Oh, lift your hands and say, I believe in the word of God. Look at the book of Nahum. In America, you call it many things, but in English it's called Nahum. N-A-H-U-M. Nahum. Let's say that in American English. Oh, good. Thank God. I'm not too far from you. Look at verse 7. Nahum chapter 1. The Lord is good. Oh, somebody say that. Maybe I'm not talking of your own tonight. I'm talking of my own. My God is a good God. For years, as a young preacher, as a young man, I first heard that from the mouth of the man who is now the president of our university, Ora Robert. Something good is going to happen to you. And a few years ago, less than 30 years ago, I heard this said, God is a good God. Somebody say, Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Listen to this. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. I am wondering how someone that is good, I who is in trouble, is permitted to hold him. May I make that a little slower. God is good. Say that. Now say that with me. Now say this with me. When I'm in trouble, He allows me to hold Him with my trouble. Did, did anybody hear that? God has no trouble. How many of you believe that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. The Lord God made the heaven and earth, and the earth was void, not heaven. <laughs> they, every time there's trouble, there's not one in heaven like on earth. I've never heard earthquake in heaven. I've never heard thunder blast in heaven. I've never heard bomb in heaven. I've only read once in my Bible there was war in heaven. It didn't last too long. The man who caused the war in heaven was cast down. Somebody say hallelujah. Now listen to this. I want to make it as easy to you as I've made it easy for myself. God is good. The Lord is good. Say that two times. I didn't hear you. But when I'm in trouble, say that. He permits me to hold him. I may not make sense to you, but I'm making sense to myself. May I borrow you one more time as I did this morning? All right. This man is a man of God. Whether you believe it or not, he is. <laughs> now, he's not just been a man of God, but he's a good man. Assuming that I am terrible. And assuming that I'm very, very bad. He stands and says, Benson it Hosa. I'm a good man. I'm a godly man. But whenever you are in trouble, hold me. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? 
All right, that's not American English. American English would be like this. This man is well fed. He has enough food in his house. Now he's saying to me, Benson Idahosa, any day you are hungry, come to me for food. Did you hear what I'm saying? If he was worse than me, he can't help me. Did you hear that? If he's in more trouble than I am, he can help me. But he has no trouble. He's good. Oh, somebody say he's good. The Lord is what? The Lord is what? Good. I want to make it easy for you to understand. When you are in trouble, you don't need a man with double trouble. You need a man that has no trouble to hold to, to take you out of trouble. It is like if I'm on the floor and I fall, I don't need a man in the pit to lift me up. The, sir, can you lift me up? I'll sure try. <laughs> lift me up, sir. Now, why did he lift me up? He is standing. Do you understand what I'm saying? This man lifted me up because I was down. If he was there and I'm here and I'm looking for help, I don't need him. I need a man who is not in trouble like me to give me help. I need someone who is well to pray for me when I'm sick. I need someone who is alive to give me life when I'm dying. I don't need a dead man to pray for me to live. The Lord is good. Say that. Now, say it again. A stronghold. Did you hear that? God is what? Strong to hold. God is strong to hold when I'm in trouble. Oh my God, you didn't hear that. The Lord is good, say it. A stronghold for me when I'm in trouble. Join the three together. The Lord is good. Strong enough for me to hold when I am in trouble. Oh my God. Don't you think that's whom you need? That's whom I need. Look at what this prophet brought out. In the day of trouble, he's good. He knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. Say, God know me. I trust him. Look at the eighth verse. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an altar end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Look at verse 9. As a Christian, what do you imagine against the Lord? Now that the Bible is telling you God is good. What is the thought in your heart? When I'm in trouble, do I still remember that God is good? That's what he's asking here. When things don't go the way I want them to go, do I change my opinion and think that the trouble is from God? His name is good. Oh, somebody say good. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to come to him. Say good. But the prophet is asking, the day you need sun and rain fall, what do you think of God? Is he still good? When you plan wedding and suddenly... 
The plan break down. Is God still good? When you want to travel and your car break down, is God still good? The day you have your birthday and your car lost engine, is God still good? When you say tomorrow is my happy day, and you lost someone very close to you, is God still good? What do you imagine against God? Don't forget, He's already good. Don't forget, He's a strong to hold in my days of trouble. Somebody should have said Amen. But, what do you imagine against God? What do you think of God when things are going adversarially against you? Hear what the prophet says. What do you imagine against God? He will make another end. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. That for you, sir. For every affliction you have experienced, you shall not have a resurrection. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whatever tribulation, whatever trial you saw once, it shall not come back again. If I were you, I would jump up and say, my, my affliction shall not come a second time. I, I didn't say you, I'm talking of me. I said, if I were you, I would say this to myself. My affliction shall not have resurrection. Steve, that's for you. Every ugly trial you have passed through it shall not come back second time every trial you have passed through he shall not come a second time. All the tears you have shed, he shall not come back a second time. Every shame you have borne, he shall not come back a second time. Somebody say loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Affliction. Your affliction. Your tribulation. Your test to your faith shall not come back a second time somebody say amen, amen. <laughs> many times it it hurts us beyond forgetfulness when we are hurt do you know the day god rescued me dr strader when i read in my bible Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. He didn't say it will not pain you, but he said it will not hurt you. Amen. It can pain you without hurting you. Yes. It can pain you. you Sometimes I do things to give you pain. But Jesus said, if I give you pain, turn your pain to gain. Allow the pain I give you to become a heart to your spirit. Many times, those you have helped, those you helped, turn their back against you. But he said, don't let it hurt you. When the people you try to lift, try to put you down, don't be hurt. When those you bless, 
curse you. Don't be hot. When persons you are trying to feed give you a blow, don't be hot. When anyone you lifted up is looking for something to put you down, don't be hot. But know this, your affliction shall not come back a second time. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? God is asking me to tell someone, not everybody, but maybe one person. Whatever that thing is that afflicted you before, is not coming back a second time. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Has any one of you ever experienced affliction? Oh, if you are one of them, stand up. If you have ever seen any affliction since you were born. Well, I know you live in America, so there's no trouble in America. But fine. <laughs> but is there anyone here tonight? This is prophecy God brought me here for. I, I, want, to, I want to be myself. Is there anyone that has ever experienced affliction? I'm talking of something is so hot you, you almost lost control. I'm asking you, have you ever passed through a situation sometimes you wish it was not happening to you? Is there anybody like that here tonight? Is there anyone since you were born was once disappointed? Yeah? Oh, is there anyone that have at any time experienced tears you didn't call for? Almost all my tears, I've never sent for them. They just come. <laughs> Many times that I'm in trouble, I never wrote an application to say, trouble, come to my house. I just see him arrive, and I say, what are you doing here? He say, I'm already here. But listen to what the Bible sent me to tell you tonight. Whatsoever, that pain, that grief, that torture, that trouble, that afflicted you pain it shall not come a second time you may be seated but I'm sent by God to tell you your last time of a repeated affliction was yesterday I don't know what that means. I don't know the meaning. But I'm so grateful. My own affliction. We have no resurrection. It shall not come. A second time. The prophet continued in verse 10. Look at his boss. For why they be folding together as tongues, and why they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as trouble, fury dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Verse 12. Thus saith the Lord. Though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. I pray this will be for somebody. If it's for no one else, it's for you, sir. imaginable to think you can be serving a good God and something terrible happen to you 
and the Lord said, they have imagined evil. I imagine good for you. What do you think of me? That's what they think of you. But what do you think of me? That's what God asked me. People have imagined evil against you. The enemies have said something terrible about you. What do you say of yourself? Because the world afflicted me and God refused my affliction. <laughs> learn, sir, learn how to turn your scars to stars. Never you let the devil have the last say about your life. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. How many of you can say amen? amen? I just pray that what I'm saying tonight will help you. Whenever you find yourself in trouble, know that good is coming. You didn't hear that. Anytime you see yourself in tears believe that cheers is coming anytime you see yourself with obstacles know that miracles are coming for well, somebody should have said amen to that why affliction shall not come back a second time God is not a wicked God God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in His name, when we do something good for Him, He doesn't say, Because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him somebody say amen. amen look at this verse 12 i want to repeat it again to your hearing hear this this is prophecy for me and you thus says the lord who is speaking here i'm asking you who is speaking thus says the lord though they be quiet and likewise many yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through though i have afflicted thee i will afflict thee no more may i ask you one more time just by the lifting of your hand how many of you have passed through trial once how many of you have seen pain more than once? Oh, in Africa we see pain every day. How many of you have been short of money sometimes? Oh God, you are in America, God's own country. Oh yes. How many of you have at any time received reproach? How many of you at any time have received insult? You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. 
We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. I had was peace. Amen. Say it loud. Peace. Try it one more time. Peace. Help yourself to say it loud. Peace. This is Saturday. I'm going to Bahamas. I didn't come to America. I only passed through here. My passport is gone. My ticket's gone. My cash gone. Checks. Somebody gave me check to pay to his account other checks i got from sons in the ministry everything i have no money for anything whatsoever and this is saturday within five minutes police surrounded me they said this is new york this is new york this is new york you know this is new york he's gone not one person gave me words of encouragement up to police all they said was you were in the wrong place <laughs> but i had one voice yeah. everybody said peace, peace. said peace, peace. <laughs> said peace. peace from god, from god. by himself god. by all means Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, what did I do? I called the ambassador of Nigeria. I called the staffs. I did everything. And they said, go to hotel and rest. Three o'clock, call back. There's no money to pay for hotel. They gave me money. I went to a hotel. Stayed there. Three o'clock I call. They say, come to the embassy. We are going to open the embassy for you. On Saturday, three o'clock. 5 p.m. I have a new passport. On Saturday. On Saturday. The company that runs airline to Nigeria sent me two first class tickets for my man and me free to go back tomorrow. By all means, God Himself. When you have anxiety and anxiousness, you lose control. But when you have peace, when anything try to happen to you, find alternative. Peace by all means. Always. Say hallelujah. You can win war without fighting. By all means. God himself. Somebody say hallelujah. I got to Bahama on Sunday with a new passport. Hallelujah. Got a new Bible? <laughs> All right. From Sunday, they gave me this Bible. 
Have you marked it like that already? Oh, my. My God. Mm. Say peace by all means. By God himself. Are you with me? Yes. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew is not far from the book of Zephaniah. Chapter 2, verse 7. Matthew's Gospel, the first book of the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 7. Read me verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. inquired of them diligently which time the star appeared. Verse 8. Return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. Verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there, be thou there. Until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Holy death. Holy death. Is that your wife? Go to Egypt with your baby. That way. Move. Now listen to me everybody for the records. Three things I want to say before. Now remember what the Bible says. Stay in Egypt till I bring you words. So don't make effort to come here. For the record please, where you have just read. Number one, in verse seven we are told the wise men went to Herod's house. When Herod met them, Herod said, to them privily, secretly. Go search for the baby. When you find him, come tell me. I will go also and worship him. The Bible said when they went to Herod's house, the star that was leading them vanished. When you leave where God sent you, to Herod's house, your star will vanish. Immediately they entered Herod's house, the star disappeared. But we are told, when they came out of Herod's house, the star reappeared. And they rejoiced exceedingly when they saw the star. Number one, don't go to Herod's house when you are looking for Jesus. Jesus. 
Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Don't go find out anything about this church from another church. If you want to know anything about living word, come to living word. Did you hear me? If you go to another place to ask of this church, your star will disappear. That's number one. Scripture number two. When they came into the house, Mama and I did two hours study on that a few days ago. When they entered into the house, can you find it there? Did you see it there? You know where it is? What verse? Verse 11. Read it together. When they were come where? Into the house. Say house. Everybody thinks Jesus was always in the manger. He spent only a few hours there. He left the manger and went to the house. Nobody can give a baby gold, silver, and frankincense in a manger. If you need gold, you need silver, you need frankincense, you must be in the house. That's why no pastor should squat. No pastor should squat with anybody. No pastor should look for a place to stay. Pastor should find a home to live. Jesus had a house. The wise men couldn't give him their gold and silver in the manger until they met him in the house. If you want to get honor and glory, be in the house. Be born in a manger, but don't spend eternity there. It doesn't matter where you start, but don't end up there. Can everybody say hallelujah to that? Because a few days time, you are going to be hearing Away in a manger, ta 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 da 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 Then you like it. I want to be in a manger. Jesus didn't stay there. All right. All right. He was born there, but he never lived there. Uh -huh. yes. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Why? God will give you peace by all means. says specifically in verse 12 for Herod verse 13 will seek to destroy verse 12 the young child's life read it the one of God read it and they turn to their own country verse 13 when they were departed, read it loud. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, All right, do what? Get up! Get up! Everyone say, get up! Anytime there's going to be danger in a Christian's life, God will make him stand up. Why? He will keep you from all evils. May I hear you say amen? amen. Arise and flee with a child to Egypt. For Herod will seek to do what? To destroy, to destroy who? The child. The question, what offense has Jesus committed that Herod wants to destroy him? Anything? Did he do bad? No. Has he stolen? No. Did he lie? No. Was he taking his throne? No. Are you here tonight? Say no. no. Did Jesus steal? No. Did he lie? No. Did he fight? No. Why did he want to destroy him when he has committed no offense? Answer. Nobody is too holy from devil's attack. You say I pay tithe, I give offering. That's no guarantee for enemy to go to hell yet. I vow. 
that's fine. When you give tithe, when you give offering, when you pay your vow, God rebukes the devourer for your sake. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Giving is a protection from lack. It's not a deliverance from attack. When you pay your tithe, your pocket is full of money. When you eat your seed, you have no harvest. But that will not stop the devil from knowing your home address. But God is faithful. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He will establish you and keep you from all evil. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now God said, Joseph, take your wife and the baby. Flee. Pastor, Pastor John, when God said flee, don't speak in tongues. Don't say, yeah, 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 Flee! Oh, la mahaka masoyo! Flee! Era la bab! Flee! Don't go to seven days prayer and fasting. When God says flee. You can't improve on God. Say, I hear you. But well, wherever God stop, you can't improve on it. He said, flee. Not say next week. Flee. Don't say I haven't got ticket. When God says flee. Is for your good. Be in Egypt till I bring you words. Aren't you glad God gave him what to go and God gave him what to stay? And God said, Be there till I bring you extra words. Can somebody say hallelujah today? Where I send you is safer than where you are here. And Joseph, verse 14, read it, let me hear. When he arose, say that everybody. He took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. This is where Pharaoh was looking for a boy to kill. But God said, go. Where I'm sending you, Pharaoh will be stupid, he will not know you are in town. No land is too dangerous for God not to keep you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Egypt was dangerous, but God said, go there. Stay. Why are we here tonight? Verse 19. Read it. But when the Lord was dead, behold, the name of the Lord appeared in the dream of the children of the Jews. Sing the Lord of God, to the king of the child of God, and go to the name of the Jews, and they are dead, and we saw the child of God. They are dead! That's sought! your life they are dead go to Egypt so your Herod can die while you are away don't be at home to be charged for murder 
I take you away. But when I kill him in your absence, you can come back after his funeral service. I don't know whether you heard what I'm saying. Go to Egypt. Now, come with your child. Come with your wife. They that saw the child's life are dead. How many will say amen to that? Now listen to this. Saying, arise and take the child, the young child. Arise and take the young child. He was a child before he went to Egypt. He was still a child when he came back from Egypt. But Herod died. Are you with me? Yes. You don't need to grow to beat the devil. If God can beat him for you. You don't say when I grow up. I beat the devil. No. Let God beat him for you. Flee to Egypt. While you are away. I God. We give you peace by all means. But when you go, you have peace in Egypt. When you come back, you have peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go to Egypt for peace by all means. While you are there, I will kill who wanted to kill you. So you can have peace by all means. Always. Your Herod is dead. Hallelujah. I say your Herod is dead. Your Herod is dead. Your Herod is dead. Your job Herod is dead. Your marriage Herod is dead. Your business Herod is dead. The church Herod is dead. Whatever Herod you have is dead. Somebody jump up and say hallelujah. Say my Herod is dead. Who killed him? 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 Why? That you may have peace. Always by all means. Give me a shout of hallelujah. Whatever it costs God, whatever it takes God to let you have peace. Is, an, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Are you with me tonight? I say, are you with me tonight? Are you with me tonight? Your Herod is dead. Herod is dead. Your marriage, Herod is dead. Your ministry, Herod is dead. Igaba Mokoho, Sayele Moho, is dead. Is dead. Herod is dead. Sayele Mahaka Mama Mama. Herod died.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa mm. is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idausa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to me. Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. I'm getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We re-entered a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where Nobody wants to go, or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Morris Serilo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? Would you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What's in the girl's name? I said it's Inuarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, we God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another no bed to me. After a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait. And I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no me got a way. He no me got a Jesu me go wese. He no me got a go wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Benson Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child, the God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Benson Indaosa. Now, Benson Indaosa childhood. Benson Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior, and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism Our Supreme Tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established a redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Father Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States 
where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people. Said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Morris, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work, and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is a current archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.